Welcome to Stewart Arts, it's Jimmy. Uh, today I'm going to do a project uh, to cut tea nuts that I bought in this Harbor Freight set down to a size that will fit the mini mill. The set that I bought, this is called the clamping kit, is a 58 piece kit, uh, costs something like 48 bucks, but, and it's got all the pieces that you need, 3 8 inch dowels and so forth, uh, to clamp anything that you might need down other than a, you know, a vise or something like that. But the T-nuts uh, are cut and sized uh, for Bridgeport Mill. So the project that we're going to do today is just simply to modify these T-nuts such that they will fit the mini mill table. I bought my mini mill about a month ago and I have played with it just a little bit uh, just to try it out and I've only used soft metals um, I cut this little, uh, my initials in this little plate, and I did some work with some aluminum, and for my uh, automaton, uh, I have done some work uh, making small fittings. But I haven't attempted uh, to cut steel, so that's what I'm going to do today. And I really haven't attempted to uh, manufacture a part to specific dimensions. So that's kind of what the focus of this uh, film will be. I've used my dial calipers to measure the T-nuts and also uh, the dimensions of the slots on the mini mill table. So here's the math problem uh, that we're dealing with. Uh, the the, uh, the T-nuts are too wide for the mini mill in two dimensions. Uh, this, I'll call it the web of the T, uh, needs to be shaved down on either side and uh, the uh, flange of the T or the bottom needs to be uh, shaved off a few thousandths on each side. The height uh, of uh, this is, is okay on both of these dimensions. So just looking at the math, uh, the T-nuts the as supplied are almost exactly a half inch. And when we look at the milling table, <coughs> the mini mill table itself and measure those dimensions, uh, we find that uh, the slot size is about 479. Uh, so the uh, math problem that we have is pretty simple. Uh, we're going to take the half inch and we need uh, it to be able to fit in a 479. So that means that we need to take off at least 21 thousandths. And so that'll be split between the two sides of the web of the T-nut. So doing the math on that, it's about 10 and a half thousandths per side uh, that's needed. So we'll call it, say, 12 thousandths. And for this machining work, uh, I, I, won't need, I won't need to be overly precise. The proof will simply be in whether the uh, T-nut will fit in the milling table. Uh, the green part of this that I have shaded here, uh, the uh, flange of the T-nut, I'm not going to mill that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, my Kalamazoo sander, and I'll just sand these edges off until uh, they're less than the 790 dimension and, and we'll just try I'll fit this. I used my two brick mini kiln to fire the T-nuts before I machined them. I was worried about residual stresses. I'm sure the mill could have handled it, but until I gained confidence uh, cutting steel, I decided to go ahead and anneal these. My setup for this machining is pretty simple. I have a small machinist vise. I've squared this, tied it in it down, and uh, trammed it. It's uh, pretty pretty accurate, uh, probably within a thousandths or so, I would say, side to side and on all angles. Uh, I don't own a parallel set or anything really that's small enough to work with this small machinist vise. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, these letter stamps, you know, which are the closest thing I have uh, to something square to put in there. They're not perfect, they're not accurate, but it's going to be good enough to uh, get a bite onto the surface that uh, I need to machine. So just tighten that up and I'll just make sure that it's uh, in there nice and tight and uh, we'll go to work. Kind of thinking through this here a little bit, one of the problems, uh, it comes with this nice little chip guard and, and I got to tell you I'm all about safety, but this chip guard is in the way. It's not going to allow me uh, to do the milling I need to do on these little T-nuts. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off for this job. And uh, I've milled a couple of little, uh, you know, I've tried a couple of little things. I know there will be a bit of a shower of uh, chips, but uh, we'll just have to uh, 
have to deal with it. I don't know what to say. Now, I don't have a DRO or anything fancy, but I'm just going to uh, uh, just do this uh, by by eye, uh, as Tubal Cain would say, bagosh and bagali, which uh, pretty well reflects it. Uh, let's see here. This thing has a bit of a radius to it, so I'm going to kind of take a zero cut pass uh, first time across here. So I need to uh, adjust this so that it is uh, just kissing the piece, and there, I can feel it, the corner of it nibbling into the radius there, so. I don't think these things need to be all the precision. Uh, it's the kind of work that I do, so I'm gonna be, I'm gonna call myself the meatball machinist going forward. All right, so we'll take it down a couple of thousand. Go ahead and, and uh, all right, so you're starting to move a little more metal. I'm just taking it really easy because I, I just don't want to hurt the machine. I don't want to hurt the tool. I want to be absolutely certain that uh, I'm doing this correctly. I'm advancing uh, about, about 4,000 feet past. Okay, looks like I've got a full bike this time. I'll turn it around. I'll, I'll first I'll file fit it. And then I'll turn it around and, and take it you know, four or five mils off the other side too if I need to. Alright, so uh, let's trial fit this. I have a feeling it's still too wide, but that's okay. I think I took off about seven or eight there. And I'm not even going to bother to check it with the mic. So I just put it on the table here and it's just as I thought. It's, it's too tight. So uh, I'll just uh, clean the chips out. Yeah, what's kind of neat about this is uh, I've done, uh, this is the third one I'm working on now. and. Uh, you know, once you get the, the mill set up uh, for what you're doing, uh, it really goes along pretty quickly. Like I've, I've got the vise in the right place and I've got my Y dimension figured out pretty well. And uh, I, I've, uh, I've done a few of them, so I kind of know what I need to do here. So getting into kind of a production mode uh, with getting these things cut down. Cutting it like butter. This is so much fun, I can't even begin to tell you. All right, so uh, go ahead and loosen this thing. Drop it down. Oh, it's, it's got a pretty good fit. Go ahead and call that one done. And uh, I've got three more to do and then I'm- I'm gonna spare you the machining of all six pieces. Suffice it to say that I did finally get the feel for it and I got into a rhythm. And uh, the mill really worked well for machining these little pieces. Augie is quite satisfied with the progress on the peanuts. I've completed the machining for the web portion of the T-nut and all of them uh, slide nicely. It's a close sliding fit uh, with a little bit of a, a slop in there. You don't want it, I don't think, to be too tight because you'll be working uh, with little chips and things down in the slot so it doesn't need to be an overly precise fit. To address the flange uh, part of the T-nut, um, I'll use uh, my Kalamazoo sander and what I'll do is uh, I'll use the uh, uh, threaded bolts that came with the 58 piece kit and I'll use that as a holder uh, for the T-nuts to take down this uh, uh, the, each of these sides here. I could certainly do this on the milling machine and uh, maybe I should just for practice uh, but I, I just choose to do it on the sander just because it'll, I think it'll be quicker. The prototype that I made that uh, fit, and it still needs a few thousand seconds off of it. Kind of rock it back and forth so you have more of a line content packed with the belt. Got a water cup back here that I'm cooling this thing down with. It does pick up a lot of heat as you're doing this. And, uh, just need a couple more thousands, I think, and then we'll be we'll be done. Yeah, I'm just using one of the studs from the whole, from the uh, clamping kit as a holder uh, for these T nuts. It's actually works out just about perfect for what I'm doing here. And then that's it. That should should clear. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, get some of the burrs off of it. Put a little camper on there.
The job is done. I'm pretty satisfied with uh, how this came out. Uh, cut the web portion of the T-nuts uh, so that they have about a 10 thousandths uh, slop fit with the mill table slots. Uh, I used the sander to cut the web portion of these. Uh, just kind of trial and error those and, until they fit in there nicely. You know, I could have bought the correct T-nuts online probably just for a few bucks, but this is a, way more fun.